Today I will show you how to create this really nice green, moody, dark look in Lightroom. And of course you can apply the same settings in Photoshop, in Camera Raw, in case you don't have a Lightroom. So let's roll that intro. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another fun episode. Before we start, and maybe you already noticed that my voice is a little bit off, and that's because I'm still a little bit sick, but I hope that you don't mind, and I hope that it will pass soon. Okay, now that we cover that, let's jump straight in the Lightroom, and let me show you how to create this really nice, green, moody, dark look. So let the fun begin. Right, guys, we are here in Lightroom, and this is our photo for today. And obviously, for this green, moody, dark look, you will need some greenery photos, so some forests, some trees, etc. And when you master this, uh, look when you know the logic behind of making this look you will be able to create this look to any other photo that you like and one pro tip this moody dark look works best on the cloudy day photo so without sunshine without uh, harsh shadow so remember that and I, I advise you to go through these tutorials uh, this tutorial as many times as you need to recreate this look without looking at this tutorial so after that you will be able to create uh, this kind of look to any other photos and you will understand the logic behind uh, of uh, creating this look so that's important that's really important to understand why are you moving certain sliders not just to remember it uh, that you need to move greens to left uh, reds to right etc so you need to understand the logic behind behind that so let's go and uh, let's retouch this okay guys as you can see this is really bright photo saturated and a lot of greens yellowish colors and we want something completely opposite we want dark photo desaturated and greens more towards the green okay so first what we need to do is to go to the exposure slider and let's boost the exposure down maybe something something like this is okay we can always change if we are not satisfied but make it a little bit darker then go with the highlights even more open the shadows all the way up because i want to equalize everything and then lower the blacks because I want to make a lot of those really dark black parts of the image. Okay, this is for a start. Then the clarity. Clarity depends. You can change it, you can make it, crank it up to make photo more contrasty or maybe lower it down to have that dreamy kind of look. Depends what you're looking for. So experiment with that, see what suits your current image. So I will leave it at zero for now and I will do it, uh, play with that at the end. And saturation, of course, we need to lower the saturation something like, like this for a start, we will see, we will see later. Okay, now let's go to the tone curve. In case you're seeing this kind of tone curve, so with all those sliders here, you need to press this uh, icon right here to be able to edit manually tone curve. So I will put one point in the center right here, one right here and then I will open the blacks. I will create that faded effect. So let me show. Just move this point a little bit up. As you can see, my blacks goes uh, faded a little bit. So I like that. But maybe it's too much and I will add another point in between and move it a little bit down. So now it's, it's a little bit better and maybe this is maybe a little bit more now. So I really like how it looks now. Okay, the next step is to go to our color sliders and to play with the colors. So I will scroll this down. As you can see, this is my color sliders and maybe you're not seeing this. Probably you're seeing something like this or even this, just one section. And uh, I don't like to work with the colors like this or because I need to go through all those three tabs or eventually I can open them all. But why I don't like this? Because if I want to play with red color, I want to be able to change the hue, saturation and uh, luminance right away <clears throat> from one, one tab. So here I need to go and jump up, down, up, down, and I don't like that. Instead, I like to go here and change from HSL to color. And now I have my colors grouped into separate groups, separate tabs. So I love that kind of way working with the colors. Right now let's go and play with the green color. Let's make green even more green. So let's move the hue slider a little bit to the right. And for my taste, I like to move it all the way to the right for this particular photo. So that depends 
on a photo you're working uh, on. So you will see. And saturation, let me see. I will move all the way to the left. For some photos, you don't need to touch saturations, maybe. For some photos, you need to move it just a little bit. For this one, I need to move it all the way to the left. And now let's go to the yellow. So because there are a lot of yellows uh, in this photo, I want to lower the saturation of the yellows too. So something like, like this and orange, I can boost it or I can reduce it. Depends what kind of uh, look I'm chasing. But here I will just boost it a little bit, just a little bit like this and that's it. So let me see the greens, the yellows. This is really, really nice. I will not touch other colors because they're basically not present here on this image. So let's go all the way down to vignette. I like to add some vignette and feather it a little bit. And then let's, let's move it this middle point, something, something like this. Okay. And maybe, so this is before and after, and maybe we can go and play with the split toning and add some colors in the split toning. If you press and hold alt or option key on a keyboard and move this, you will see the maximum amount of this color applied to the shadows. So maybe something like bluish tint right here and then apply just a touch, just maybe around 10, eight, eight like so. Then I will press alt or option key and see how this impact my highlights maybe something like this I like and again just a little bit so this is this is before and this is after before and after really really huge difference but we are not uh, not uh, finished yet so now I want to go all the way up and I want to play with these these settings right here so let's go to graduated filter and let's add some darkness to the corners even more so as you can see I can play with exposure so like this, then add another one right here, maybe another one right here, just to maybe this a little bit less and less this, maybe just play with that. Okay. And when you're ready, when you're finished, just uh, click on that icon again and we will go out of that setting. So now what I like to do is to go to my brush setting. Why? Because now I can brush some things out, maybe brighten this, uh, this bridge here and uh, lower the brightness on this back part here, etc. So there is one trick that I want to show. Here you can see this auto mask uh, that you can check. If you check this, the Lightroom will make a mask uh, based on the lightness of the colors and the colors automatically for you. So if I'm painting right here, it doesn't matter. My brush size can be a little bit bigger but the Lightroom will automatically just paint, just make darker parts that are uh, sampled that color. So with that uh, plus sign, with that uh, X cross, I don't know, you will sample the color and all around in brush diameter will be uh, affected. So if you want to see the mask, you need to press O at, uh, on a keyboard, just press O and you will see the mask part. So now, I'll just go and click here, click here, click here, just click a few times and you will see here only the grass will be masked because it's only bright green parts. So here, here, that's really, really useful when you have some complicated things like here and you don't want to mess with the trees, etc. So press O again to get out of that and then you can play with uh, this slider. So I'll move exposure a little bit down and highlights even more so. I don't want this part to be distracting for me. So just a little bit, maybe like, maybe like this. That's good. And now I'll play, play with the bridge. So I will go on the new mask and press O on the keyboard to see what I'm masking right here. Like this, I just want a bridge. And if I masked a little bit more than I needed, I can press Alt or Option key and just, just erase, just erase this, okay? And maybe I don't need this. And now I want to press O again to get out of this and brighten this bridge a little bit, open the shadows and bring the clarity a lot like this, sharpness a lot, because I want this to be my attention one, I want to go here. So that's good. And maybe even brighter something. Let me see something like in between. You can uh, 
position the mouse at this uh, slider and just with the scroller you can change the values like this and when you're done again click on the brush and you will go out of this another thing that i want to create here is radial filter just click on it once and create some radial shape like this position it here and i want to invert it right because i want to affect only inner part and i want to feather it a lot so like this and i want to make this brighter too so just a little bit brighter open the shadows bring the clarity just a touch so i want all my attention to go here and this is it guys so let me show you before we had this really bright, really saturated photo. And after applying all these effects, we have this really nice green, moody, dark look that is really, really nice to see. And now the beauty of all of these moving sliders left and right is that you can save this as a preset and apply it to any other image just with one click. So now that you made this, you can go on the left side on the preset, press on this plus icon and say, create preset, name it, however you want put it in any group you want and just click create you want to uncheck gradiated filters and uh, radial filters because you don't need that in any for in each uh, new photo it will be different positions and different shapes so you need to make that manually later and that's it Cre uh, press create and you're done i already have it here and let me show you if i go to another photo like this this is before and when i apply this this is after or i have another version of it so i have a few different versions and this is after so before and after really nice dark moody look right guys if you want to create this exactly the same look inside of photoshop you just need to open this image inside of photoshop and go to camera row filter camera row filter and uh, lightroom has exactly the same engine so you can do exactly the same things there if you're not familiar with that go and watch my previous tutorial on how to transform summer into fall you can find the link right here okay and that's basically it for today i really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn something new and useful from it if you have any questions regarding to this episode please leave them down there in the comment section i will be glad to answer them if you like it if, if you appreciate it press that like button share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already it will help the channel right guys thank you for watching and see you in the next one episode bye bye